now. Right. Do, do, do. Right. Do, do, do. Right. So we are with uh, Fahad Masood, uh, who's a former, uh, I guess, like Mirage 3 uh, M5 pilot. Would you say that? Correct. Both. 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 Were. So, like, uh, before we get into the questions here, uh, what's the difference between uh, the three and the five? Oh, well, uh, handling difference is one aspect. Technical wise, it's um, but the airframe is not too different. But the three was more of an air superiority version. Uh, the five was more to do with air to ground, some bit of air to air, but more to do with the surface attack role. Brilliant stuff. And uh, if like the people in the uh, the comments and the people who are joining us, like, can you give us a bit of a background of your uh, like maybe a two minute of like your Air Force career, but in case they don't know who you are, uh, Fahad? Certainly, this uh, timeline ranges about um, eighteen years uh, in total, including all the uh, flight training and the application of air power domain. Um, it was a mixed bag from initial training, flight training, to a tour of duty with USAF, uh, flew T-38s there, came back, uh, went on to the Mirages, um, went to the training command, uh, did about, what, three years, um, mentored more than 10 courses or 10 batches of um, aviators within the Pakistan Air Force at that time and subsequently moved into um, uh, some amount of uh, crew resource management, CRMI, train the trainer profile as well as um, some amount of aircraft action investigation as well both at the organizational and the uh, national scale as well. Absolutely, it's brilliant. Uh, so, guys, get your questions coming in for hard. Uh, for hard. Uh, but uh, how did you get into that kind of almost accident kind of world in, you know, uh, in, in aviation? Well, um, as all of us, I have had my journey as well in life, um, and a transition from the cockpit to. Uh, being a safety risk manager to some amount of aircraft action investigation um, boiled down to me leaving the cockpit and looking for, um, well, diverse opportunities, as I would say. And obviously building up on a career um, which uh, takes me till date to places because in my humble opinion, it's um, learning from cradle to grave. So I'm still learning. Um, I'm going in uh, the next week to the Dubai Air Show. I'm going to moderate nice. a few discussions on, uh, yeah, uh, the AAM profile, uh, which is the advanced air mobility, urban air mobility, EV toll tech, uh, unmanned aerial systems. So just like aviation, I'm transitioning from one step to another. Awesome stuff. As you can see there, Fahad, uh, on the uh, on the side there, there's some plenty of great questions coming in. So I'm going to let you loose and guys, get your questions coming in. Thanks a lot, Mike. So uh, first and foremost, we have Munib. Uh, Munib, uh, if I have you correctly, you're from Australia. It's a pleasure to have you here. We're an old, old friend, um, but very relevant questions. First, um, what are your working what are you working on currently hmm. presently as i mentioned i'm uh, diversifying into advanced air mobility urban air mobility profiles portfolios on ev toll electric vertical takeoff and landing portfolios as well um, as uh, um, uh, um, urban uh, traffic management which is also a domain um, related to aam um, my okay you also asked me about areas of research and your PhD. Oh, well, uh, it's an ongoing process. Uh, I'm working on something to do with training need analysis and um, 
automated flight deck management. It's a mix of the two. I'm also looking at how do we enhance pilot training to make sure um, the best possible of aviators go across the world of aviation, may it be um, the commercial side or uh, the military side of things. So that is what I'm tending to research on in my doctorate profile. Uh, next up, same, okay, uh, we have another question by Munim. With the advent of AI and automation, what does the future hold for aviators? Well, um, we need to learn to use artificial intelligence uh, in all domains of aviation. What to talk of flight deck only. Um, artificial intelligence is a reality. Uh, it is unfair to say that um, the pilot will be taken out of the loop. Um, he will always be there uh, for the near future. Distant, yes, I agree. It's a, it's a challenge in itself. Um, you've seen the movie Stealth. It uh, talks about a lot of limitations of AI as well, where it goes rogue, judgment issues, uh, which is the epitome of uh, any fighter pilot to have the best of judgment capability, uh, ethics, morality that come out of uh, out of a lot of things. It could it's good at decision making, but that to decision making within the domains of alternatives available. So AI is going to be the future, but a distant one. Um, the aviator is always going to be in the loop till AI goes above human intelligence. Uh, how will pilots be trained and stay trained for a fully automated AI controlled future? Well, automated is already here. Uh, the automated flight deck management or automated airmanship, uh, they, it's, it's a reality. Uh, we have to learn how to manage this affair and how to do it to the best possible extent. Um, before there is science, there is science fiction. We all have to understand we are very clear on this. We are 100% that there is no other way we manage uh, the flight deck and the reality is the same. Um, AI control future distant yet, we will have to look at things. How do things materialize and become uh, uh, an, an AI uh, dominated aviation eco cycle? It's going to take its time. Um, but something that I'm working on as well with relation to how to keep uh, the aviators uh, up to par because as we understand AI is gradually, surely and slowly moving ahead. But human intelligence on the other hand is well pretty much stagnant at where it is. Uh, please tell us everything about the J10B. Hmm, Muni, probably you're thinking of or asking about the J10CE which is the export version of the, um, uh, the Dragon. Uh, it's all open source information now uh, to be candid. There's nothing new on it. Um, it's um, it's it's a extremely potent weapon system. It carries the longest stick in um, the subcontinent, which is the PL-15. Um, it has an operational radius of about 3,000 nautical miles, sorry, 3,000 kilometers. So it's 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 there. Um, well, as I would say and I've told many of my uh, colleagues as well there are some secrets that should remain secrets so I'll leave it as that at that uh, okay next up uh, what was the transition like from being a fighter pilot to a full-time academic um, well one thing that's held me aloft or uh, has given me relative success is uh, the discipline that is there um, and I've taken this from uh, the best possible definition of it and I've applied it on my own life and I keep telling my own, my the mentees or the prodigies that I generate um, or produce over passage of time and the best possible definition of discipline is to forego short term infatuations for the long term self respect. Um, in academics, it is extremely important that we look at the longer picture. Um, in military or fighter flying, it was a one day at a time sort of a thing, but academics need more discipline and effort. Uh, and that is where the, where the different lie, difference lies. Um, what were the major challenges you know, to make your mindset? Well, the mindset is still perseverance. Uh, it continues to be an, an important facet 
of my life. Um, I fall down seven times, get up eight. That's the way I work. And I've had my fair share of falls in my life as well. <clears throat> uh, next up, uh, Mahmood. Okay, is PF pursuing directed energy weapon pods on fighter aircraft? Well, DEWs is uh, something which is very, very potent. The limitation on it is the power requirement that it carries. Anything above 50 watts is a challenge, uh, 50 kilowatts is a challenge, and it becomes uh, even more potent for a fighter type aircraft. Um, and yes, the Air Force or the Pakistan Air Force is interested. How early we get it, or is it in the pipeline or on the drawing board? What's happening there? I really don't have a don't have a timeline on it, but it's it's there. It's on the wish list, as we call it. Um, next question by Mahmood: Are there any plans to upgrade, retire Mirages from PF inventory? It's already on the on the cards. Uh, we've got roles which have been replaced. Um, may it be A to C or uh, the stand of weapon capability is still in the process, but the Mirage 3 and 5 have lived their lives, may it be in uh, air to ground role, stand of weapon capability, air to air, or um, photo recce capability. I believe uh, you may have read my article which came on Air Forces Monthly uh, in November um, on, on, on um, the photo recce aspect of, or photo reconnaissance part of Mirage 3s and 5s in the Air Force. So do have a read on that if you have, have an option on it. Um, SPF working on a concept of loyal wingmen. Yes, uh, they are. Um, loyal wingmen is, uh, is, is a force multiplier in its own tier. Um, the collaboration, especially with uh, the um, with the Khan program of the Turkish Aerospace Industries and the Azm from the Pakistan Air Force collaboration, is working on this domain as well. PL-15, I've mentioned before, yes, they are very much on the inventory of the Air Force. Uh, they're working on it. It's public. Uh, J10CE is having it on the pylons and it's. Um, dual on single pylons. So that's an interesting domain. You may have seen images of it already. Are drone pilots going to take over real ones in the future? Well, there already are. Uh, if you look at um, um, the reconnaissance surveillance aspect, they already are using it. They're not able to carry too much weaponry, um, but it's, it is still there. Uh, air to surface, mostly air to air combat with UCAVs, is a bit of a future right now, but it's on the cards. Um, next question still, Mahmood, with introduction of uh, stealth detecting radars with Air Force around the world, is it even worth to acquire stealth fighter? To be candid, if you look at the generations of uh, military or fighter aircrafts, uh, sixth generation aircraft, which is beyond the fifth right now, is looking to forego some amount of stealth. Um, they're looking more uh, stealth, um, uh, stealth, but not really into in-depth uh, stealth design. Uh, stealth, on the other hand, they're looking all, uh, they're looking at the other aspect of uh, stealth, stealth by paint, uh, which which is which is a cheaper solution, but not by design. Uh, next is Patriot Texan. Okay, good to have you here, Patriot. Um, what's the role of PF's non-BVR platforms like Mirage 3 and F7 in today's environment, where most fighter jets have BVR capabilities? Okay, um, well, um, now it's point defense. Let's keep it there. Uh, they're good at cap at point defense, but it's more to do with giving them training, giving the BBR aircraft training as well, and that is where their major role comes into play. Uh, okay, uh, let's go back. I'm sorry, I missed a few questions. Oh, yeah, okay. So next up is, what was your max speed and altitude in the Mirage? Well, I've seen Mark II, twice the speed of sound. I've seen um, about 40... 6, 45,000 feet, that's relatively high. Um, not as high as the aircraft that we have right now, but I'm talking of 50s technology, so it's it's there. Robert, uh, good evening, good to have you here. Satyajit Lal, good to have you here as well. Opinion on the 530, given Air Commodore Kassutafel's negative assessment of the missile on his blog on Aeronaut. 530 was um, 
the first bee we are in the in the in the subcontinent so that's 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 mostly it um it was employed a few times not a lot of times but for the very expensive weapon that was one um it never really had a major impact but as we call it it was still the longest stick in the region um yes i completely agree with uh, air commodore kessel's point of view not a very uh, potent weapon which could have been you know more of a more or more of a threat generator than anything else um how many hours did you get to fly on the mirage well let's keep it between anything 5 to 1000 500 to 1000 uh, did you ever get dscd with any raf aircraft hmm not really uh, we had a few instructors from the raf at our flight instructor school so we had a lot of information sharing on the tornadoes especially in the gulf war 1 domain uh, where they were not very successful because of their um uh tactics that they were employing during the gulf war 1 arjun ayer good to have you here apart from the mirage 3 eppf procured various other variants such as the eo from australia el from lebanon yes and different additional french mirage 3 es have you felt any difference flying these different aircraft yes 3 el was the most powerful ex lebanese eo uh because of its um uh because of its capability from australia and we converted most of them into grifo m which was um uh, a radar airborne intercept radar capability so it was meant for air to air role um so the most powerful for the el most competent was the eo from the australians then we had uh, the eps and the rps which was photo recce um photo reconnaissance surveillance um, they were interesting flights and i'll rekindle my thought hey hey uh, do read my article on air forces monthly um on this uh, reconnaissance version as well satyajit lal coming back to you again from hashkit interview with the jf17 pilot su13 mc19 is not a threat due to experience in dscd with the f16 m1 c5 but mirage third mica is a dangerous opponent yes i agree uh uh mirage 2000 with mika is a potent weapon system without questions if i look at it on training point of view uh possible scenarios of mirage with mirage 2000 of the indian air force with the mika have been um experimented with uh, in the pakistan air force during the dacts with different aircrafts uh may it be in country or out of country as well um so there has been training on it successful and successful we leave it as uh, as he say uh, next up arjun nair what were the essential differences between rose 1 2 and 3 in your perspective of flying experience and concerns rose 1 was airborne intercept it had a grief om in it rose 2 and 3 was a to ground uh, with uh, night vision capability goggles as we call them and uh, they were good in good in their own domain uh, mirage has always been good at low level high speed ingress uh, because of its uh, multiple dampers as we call them on the inboard of the trailing edge of the aircraft uh, dr victoria okay good to have you here uh, dr victoria greeting from ireland everyone what would you consider the three most challenging aspects of being a pilot okay one situational awareness because the world around you is dynamic extremely dynamic especially in the three dimensions x y and z axis um that's one two judgment which is the epitome of any uh, fighter pilot or pilot for that matter uh, sally made the best judgment call uh, with the miracle on the hudson and he made it very successful by saving everybody 158 souls on board so judgment being number 2 um three um live to fight another day that would be an important facet as well um because we need to understand when uh, we have won and when we have lost so that's another aspect uh, did you experience any emergency while flying mirage 3 and 5 yes a lot of them i cannot count on my fingers how many did i <laughs> experience but the fact that i'm sitting in front of you i think that speaks that i did pretty okay 
uh, in handling those emergencies. But thank you, Dr. Victoria, for being here. Um, Arjun, coming back, why are certain Mirage 3 and 5 of the PF painted in ghost grey camouflage, while majority of them remain in the original dark uh, grey, dark green camouflage? So it's as per the rule. Um, the grey ones are for air superiority, and the dark green or um, dark green camouflage is for A2 ground. That's the basic difference between the camouflage color. Uh, what happened to the original 24 Mirage 3 EPR DPRP when number 5 Falcon shifted to Block 42s? Initially, they were distributed all over the Air Force, uh, but now they've come back to their um, their home ground, which is um, in uh, Shorecourt Rafiki Air, ba Air Base, and they're flying uh, out of uh, one squadron, which is the 50 squadron, which has amalgamation of all these variants that you've mentioned, EP, DP, and RP. Uh, F-16 Block 5052 has taken over uh, five Falcons originally. That is how they're operating. Next up, Arjun, have you ever flown training missions with the R-530 on board? No, nope, sorry, 550, yes, not 530. They were phased out before me. If so, how would you rate the missile considering the legacy 530s are not considered? Yeah, so I haven't flown it, so I can't give you a number or a verdict on it. Um, next up, have you ever flown the Mark Loop in Wales? No, I have not. I have seen it, uh, but I would have uh, would have loved to be there. Um, we have our alternatives of the Mark Loop in Pakistan, so uh, been there, done that on a few fronts, but not in Wales. Ideal place to be, to be very uh, very candid. Have you ever ejected from an aircraft? No. Uh, if so, was the emergency cause you to eject? No, I didn't eject, so I. I'm pretty okay in one piece right now. David Smith, good to have you here. What would you consider to be the biggest strengths of the BF training process? Uh, they've always practiced and trained to have uh, to, to fight outnumbered. Um, that is the uh, core of it. Um, the training simulation and the Brief debriefs are very, very fangs out sort of a thing, especially the debriefs. And I believe that strengthens um, if, if you pick out the nooks and crannies and the limitations or may it be of the aircraft or the pilot um, and turn them into strengths. That is uh, how we can make the best of uh, fighter pilots as well. And I believe we've done decent in that domain also. Satya Jirnal, welcome back. Any opinion on the Skander Shweb Alam Khan's uh, article, The Fighter Gap, published in the 2000 in Defense Journal? I'm sorry, I'm not conversant. I do love to read, but somehow or another, I've missed uh, that article. Um, pardon me for that. Um, Arjun, again, as of your latest knowledge, which aircraft does the modern Mirage 3 EP Rose 3 compare with the Indian Air Force capability-wise? Mirage 3 is on the way out. So if I were to compare it with anyone, the outgoing Bison, I think, that would be appropriate, the MiG-21 on the Indian side. Uh, next up, uh, Satyajit is uh, Air Chief Marshal Hakimullah Khan Durrani still considered to be the best Mirage pilot or is there a new Top Gun? Well, records are made to be broken. Let's keep it at that. I have penultimate respect for all uh, of my seniors and I believe they have groomed me to be where I am today. Um, I have groomed my juniors to be where they are today. And I certainly believe the next generation is always better uh, than the previous ones. Uh, so we have a lot of, um, pardon my French, a lot of Hakimullahs in the Air Force right now. Uh, coming back, I have misplaced my questions again, sorry. Mm, let me scroll through this. Okay. Uh, does the PF have any specific A to C missile that the IFs, Sea Eagle and Harpoon missiles? Yes, certainly. We have the Charlie 802 A's on the, um, and it's open source information, so I don't need to hide it anyways. Uh, on the JF-17 with the, uh, with the A to C role. So that is there. Uh, what does the PF currently have in terms of fighters? Uh, it's a good mixed bag uh, of um, high 
uh, and and medium tech uh, fighter aircraft block 52s with the f16 you have the j10s the j jf 17s mirages gradually on their way out so that is there um, so that's mostly it f7 f7 pgs to be specific uh, they're on the point defense or the cap roll but that's mostly it so it's a make good mix of high and medium tech aircrafts as well satyajit uh, lal mirage 5 with exocet and jf 17 by the ij80 yj83 that's the 802a then there is a brahmos alcm let me re re run through this question mirage 5 with exocet versus jf 17 block 3 with okay so how do we come compare the mirage 5 with the exocet old school um, leave that as it is jf 17 block 3 with the yj83 potent yes su30 mki uh, with the brahmos um, um uh, brahmos is a potent weapon it has both a to ground a to c versions agreed uh, but if i go to uh, jf 17 block 3 um with all the integration that is there of Uh, the sensors that that it carries and the fusion of data and information uh, with the uh, charlie 802a or yj83 with su30 mkis having their issues of integration as we speak and we've we've seen that in the recent past as well of data fusion and sensor fusion i would grade jf17 block 3 a step up Uh, from the SU30 MKI, so JF17 Block 3 not being biased, I'm being more technical on this M- uh, SU30 MKI number two and Mirage 5 on the way out as number three. Uh, next up, you're a pilot. Good to have you here. I'd like to make a piloted electric electric ducted fan jet aircraft at some point. By the way, Stealth is an underrated movie. <laughs> yes, um, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a good good insight to what ai can do and, and can go wrong as well in the process so it's an underrated movie it's a good one uh, satyajit lal again good to have you here any serious limitation in operating pl15 e's instead of pl15 not really um, as per my understanding um, the 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 platform uh, is potent the j10 itself um, it can manage both and i don't think there any limitation sadil yas good to have you here thank you for your service to the pf you're most welcome if you would allow to personally own any aircraft all all time which would you get hmm personal ownership well i would love to go to, go, go for the mirage 3 el the lebanese version they were they were good very very powerful uh, and they had a kick in them with the afterburners and everything so the senec mata 09 c5 engine was was good so obviously a lot of people would go for a lot of other versions but for me that takes the cake uh satyajit lal honest unfiltered opinion on the a5 phantom should have had a radar in the nose cone if they close the radar it should have had a no- radar uh, on the in the nose because a5 phantom is a um, offshoot or an or, or an a to ground version web of the f6 or the ft6 uh, f6 to be specific the farmer um if the if the nose had a radar it would have been a lot more potent one way or another it didn't so satyajit lal largest pf based musaf or masrur musaf uh, is potent in its own domain but masrur size wise it is the biggest in the subcontinent i think that's a record that it maintains uh, neuropilot again which aircraft easiest to maintain mirage 3 5 no mirage c block 52 yes jf 17 yes great fighter doesn't mean much great fighter doesn't mean much it can't be made ready to fly so jf 17 and the f 16 both both are modular maintenance aircraft so you take out a module put in a module tighten a few screws and the aircraft ready to go Mirage 35 is old school tech so it's it's always been a challenge but I I I must give kudos to the engineers of the PF they've been they've been they've been kept flying for more than 50 years now uh, in the Pakistan Air Force um, next up Mahmood uh, good to have you here what about PL10 PL21 does PF have them uh well if they have it I'm not cognizant of it so I'll leave it at, at that 
Satyajit Sab again. Any plans to meet the IF Tejas demo team in Dubai? Yes, I am looking forward to meeting them. It's always good to uh, meet professional people in the aviation domain. Vio Magazine click the JF-70 demo team pilots being given a tour of the Tejas in an earlier show, air show. Yes. The um, exchanges have always been there, uh, but it's always good to find competent individuals in aviation and Tejas, the pilots who are operating them, it's always good to exchange notes with, with them as well. Um, Satyajit Sa, why wasn't uh, Wing Commander uh, Salim Beg Mirzas awarded Satara Jurat or Halala Jurat? Um, that's history. I wasn't there at the time, so I cannot say, but he is. Uh, one of the highest shots of 71 max hits. Um, the Air Force can uh, look at it to review if things can change or alter. Uh, they, I guess they, they did some review on it, uh, but I'm not sure if anything has happened post here af at that. Uh, next up, Arjun is here. As a historian, could you tell whether the PF took inspiration lessons from IDF Air Force from 67-71 war with India to operate Mirage 3? Well, uh, the Mirage was never, well, the Mirage was all over the world. It's been sold. Uh, it was one of the most sold aircraft in the, in the world at that time in the 50s. Uh, 60s and 70s. So I believe the Air Force didn't really have to go to the IDF for anything. Um, where there were so many other, other um, Air Forces who were operating this uh, weapon system. So knowledge was exchanged, could have been exchanged with other Air Forces other than the IDF. Uh, David, welcome back. Beyond drones, after two years, what do you think are the primary lessons from Ukraine and for NATO and for Russia? Okay, so primary lesson, air superiority is key. May it be in a specific envelope, may it be envelope with regard to time, may it be envelope with regard to airspace or ground space. You have to have air superiority without which you cannot operate on ground with freedom. So that's the biggest lesson I think um, is a takeaway for all air forces of the world. Uh, from the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Uh, did you ever fly Aces, Meet or Saffron Bandit? Uh, yes and no. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> yes and no. Um, where were you posted May 2nd, 2011? I was in the training command at that time. Yes. Uh, Miss Victoria, what was your most memorable flight and why? The first time I crossed Mark 1, I think that was the most memorable, which was going supersonic. Um, why? Well, um, Chuck Yeager did it in 47, so I thought that had a lot of glamour associated with it. But not too much of a difference, it was pretty much the same. Um, yeah, we, the bump was felt, things got, got quite after going supersonic, but that was mostly it. So, yeah. Uh, any lessons from Shaheen 10, particularly against the SU-30 MKI? I, I, I wasn't there in Shaheen 10, so I can't say, but lessons are always drawn. Um, there are takeaways from these exercises on the international front. Uh, but, and uh, the Shaheen exercise has been going on for very, very long time. It's been like 12, 15 years now. So there are valid lessons on tactics, doctrine, air power employment every time. Um, so there, there ought to be a lot of lessons that came out of um, the Shaheen 10 as well. SU-30 MKI specific, I, I can't really say, but obviously um, they were flying in the same airspace, so lessons there, yes. Any reason in particular why the A-37 was not modified? Or... Mm, we have a lot of T-37, so I'm, I may correct this question if I'm not wrong, not wrong Satyajit Lal. Uh, any reason in particular why the T-37 was not modified for close air support, such as the A-37 Dragonfly? Uh, well, um, we never we never got it as, or we never thought of it 
as per our air power doctrine in the pakistan air force to be employed in that low air support role so we already had um, other aircraft from the time the saber did excellent uh, in its own timeline f6 a5 they were all in uh, close air support role um so so i guess it was never doctrined to be used in this role hence uh usama welcome usama good to have you here uh, jf17 j10 have pl10 hobs correct uh but what about f16 f16 has am 9l and mike yes which is not hobs absolutely uh, hobs is high offside bore uh high off bore side weapons pardon my uh, incorrection there but pakistani f16 also have hmds uh can this missile be used as a hobs missile with the help of hmds um helmet mounted displays on the f16 um can have their own m9 access but i don't believe the pl10 can and will be integrated with the um with the f16 block 52s which has the uh, hemix which we call it um so not there pl10 hobs is uh, is 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 good to go on the jf17 and the uh, j10 as well jf17 block 3 specific your pilot welcome back Do you think that one lesson from the Ukrainian war is to have more low-end fighters than fewer high-end fighters that are difficult to obtain, sustain operationally? They need more jets. Numbers have always played a role. Yes, quantitative superiority has its edge. Um, but something which I've I've always mentioned: the man behind the gun matters more. Having a low-end or a medium tech. a uh, military or a fighter aircraft is good enough if you have a well trained um, jock in the hot seat that makes that makes a big difference um arjun nair welcome back is it true that pf and psc had to had to carry put massive changes on the rossi mirage before integrating uh, oh, okay had to carry out massive changes yes uh, big changes uh, because Uh, the Aussie Mirages were integrated into Rose One with the Grifo M uh, uh, AI or Airborne Intercept Radar, uh, which uh, required a lot of engineering marvels to come into play. Yes, that is correct. Uh, is uh, Satya Jit Sab again? Is tandem seating better than side by side seat uh, in a trainer based on your experience? T thirty seven, T thirty eight. uh side by side seating is always better the perception is very specific the communication is very direct in a tandem seat it gets to be a challenge at times to communicate uh, with the uh, with the less experienced guy who is sitting in the front seat so yeah uh, dr victoria again what was the most challenging or difficult decision you have made while flying decision making has always been um uh always been a strong point for is a strong point for any fighter pilot it has its loops for example the uda loop from john boyd or the rabda from the british um the observe oriented decide act has always been the core in my decision making in in fighter flying um flying low level to 40 feet agl had a um turbine failure in the engine uh, we were about 50 miles from our field decide opted to disengage the pattern it was near to ground level bombing um, and we recovered back to our base um, i was very less experienced at that time but the decision that i learned from was uh, my ip at that time uh, scorner osama um, and he's Uh, he gem of an individual excellent professional as well so he decided and i was in that loop of decision making that we discontinued maintained a certain pass setting came back landed and as soon as we throttled back on touchdown um, the whole all hell broke loose and the complete engine was in tatters uh, behind us so we switched off on the runway landed uh, once again so challenging a decision but thanks to um sir osama we lived uh, that uh, that scenario um mohammed osama sir what do you see the future of f16 pf is going to stay around it's going to be 
there for a while. Um, I certainly believe J10C is more competent with regard to its capabilities because it's the latest tech that is there in the world of uh, military aviation. Um, but it's going to stick around for a while. And it has its specific roles, which it's doing and doing it pretty well. Satyaji Lalsa, welcome back. How many Mirage 3s did PF lose in 71? How do you rate their performance in the conflict? Uh, I, I, I'm not current on numbers, Satyaji Lalsa, but um, I would certainly like to say that the Air Force's performance in numbers in 71 was better than in 65. That's something which is of importance. Uh, next up, Arjun Saab, welcome back. Uh, when were you in the US for training? 2003, 2004, 5, something of that timeline. What do you think of the impact of the September 11 attack to air power doctrine of USAF and the PEF? September 11 was, um, was an eye opener. May it be in air power uh, employment, uh, may it be on doctrine side, may it be on aviation security. Um, so, the rules of engagement had to be revised for any such or certain or similar scenarios. But what is important here to understand that it's a continuous process um, of ensuring that the airspace is secure. Um, may it be any country of the world. So it was lessons galore for everyone. May it be the USAF or the Air Force, uh, Pakistan Air Force or any other Air Force for that matter. Um, any comment on Air Commodore Sayyid Sajjad had this opinion on the 65 war that... Uh, mm, I wouldn't like to comment on that. They're too senior to me. Um, so I, I would leave, leave it at, at that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's important. Uh, that they keep discussing what they want to discuss. Next up, uh, David, thanks for the answers. Lighter question, which did you enjoy doing more in the Mirage dogfighting, flying fast and low? Fast and low any day of the week. Uh, Satyaji Larsa, what do PF pilots think of the Rafale? Extremely potent aircraft. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an excellent weapon system, without question. Um, they have um, trained against wouldn't be the right word, trained with may be the right or the correct uh, uh, phrase here, trained with. Um, so it's, it's a matter of employment. The aircraft is excellent, but how is it employed in the um, subcontinent or a, when China walks in uh, the conflict as well? So it's going to be, it, it's going to be interesting. Arjun Sahib, have you ever flown with the CCS? Yes. If so, how was your experience? The best of briefs, uh, the best of debriefs, a lot of learning points. Um, they, they really thrash a sortie and in the process, the pilot as well. So I'll leave it there. Um, uh, Mahmood Sahib, again, have you ever disoriented during night flying? Mm, have how come over it? Okay, uh, disorientation during night flying, no. Uh, I have never had ex had that experience, but in weather, yes. Um, so the easiest, surest, the and the most challenging way to do this is to believe the instruments. Your mind says something else, your eyes say something else, and the instrument says something else. So I had to believe the instruments to the peril of my the peril of losing sanity. Um, my, my brain wasn't aligned to what it was saying, but I had to believe it. And that is how I survived. Uh, Satyaji Lalsab, did PF take any lessons from the IAF, USAF, XS, Gope, India, Indo French exercises, Garuda? Uh, yeah, well, the um, Air Force always is maintaining uh, the Pakistan Air Force is always maintaining a listening watch on everything that is happening around the world. So this scope India or the group, uh, the Indo-French Grauda exercise, I think it's Garuda, but still, um, yes, a lot of learning points have been taken away uh, from from both these exercises. Uh, Satyajit Lal Sab again, any fighter that you think should be acquired by the PF, uh, the JS-37, JS-39. Gripen, uh, well, every weapon system has its strings attached. 
at present where we stand today with the JF-17, Block 3, the J-10C um, and a good crop of f 16 I think we're pretty okay uh, to make a stand. So that's that's appropriate. Uh, Arjun Saab, when are your, well, sorry, what are your opinions on the alternate reality between the PF would acquire the A7 Corsair 2 and the engine electric lightning? lightning how would that have played out? Uh, a7 Corsair, we opted for the uh, F-16. We also had the option of the F-20 Tiger Shark, but we still opted for the F-16. F-16 has proven, proven extremely well in its own domain, being a multi-role fighter aircraft um, from 80s till date with all the upgrades that are there. English electric lighting air, lightning aircraft, well, with, it, it would have been interesting to see an aircraft with its... Uh, with its exhaust or afterburners vertical instead of horizontal, that I guess is is about it, but nothing more than else. Uh, Satyajit Lal, so is CCS a wartime organization? I ask because in 71, I have tagged the flu as a single unit instead of spreading pilots into various, such as Top Gun. Yes, same, uh, CCS. Um, now it is a bit more ex uh, advanced. Um, it's not CCS anymore. CCS is a small component of the big umbrella that is there, which is um, which is called ACE. So they're working at, at different domains uh, right now. Uh, Saad, welcome back. Do you think Pakistan with Turkey can produce a viable fifth generation in the next ten years? They have the uh, they have the blueprint at least, um, and with the competence of um, the engineers which are there from PAC, Camera and the TAI and the experience that that has been gained with the uh, JF-17 program, I think it's hugely possible. Ten years, uh, only time will tell. Uh, Satyajit Lal Sahib again, any comments on when the PF nearly acquired the A7 Corsair 2? Uh, there was a lot of push. Let's keep it there. Um, a lot of people in the lobbying groups, both in United States and in Pakistan, were willing to get that. But the Air Force put it foot, its foot down and decided for the F-16, which in the long run has played a played a big role. Um, any fighter jet you believe the PF had rejected in the past, but you felt would have been a great fit for the PF? Not really. I think uh, the decision makers strategically have um, have have made most, if not all, the decisions correct in acquisitions of weapon systems, aircraft or fighters specifically. Um, next up, uh, any attempts to buy F-16s produced by Turkey? And none that I've heard of. Uh, none that I've heard of. MLUs took place, midlife upgrades with the with the Turkish. Uh, but nothing more. I don't think so. Saad, uh, will the previous block of DF-17 be updated to block 3? That is the plan. That is the plan. They will be upgraded to block 3. Uh, the JF-17 obviously has advantages, but do you think the PF could find advantages to buying uh, of buying KAI FA-50 to fill out, large, out, fill out a large fighter? Uh, I, I, I don't think, because just like Buying a car and keeping a car are two different stories. You can buy a Rolls Royce, uh, but can you maintain it? So the JF-17, because of its because of its plus points, because of its uh, long haul with the PAF, has its backshop integrations and engineering issues resolved. Um, and people have been trained both on the aviation fighter pilots and the engineering maintenance sides as well. So JF-17 is uh, the cup of tea right now. Um, next up, why did the PF go for J-10 when the JF-17 was clearly built an alternator for the former? Um, the roles, J-10 is a heavy weight category, JF-17 medium uh, to lightweight, let's keep it there. Uh, J-10 has greater um, greater capacities and competencies, but the JF-17, at least till the Block 2, Block 3 has upped the ante a lot. And I think that that is where it stays. And obviously, we 
the the PF is always looking for the longest stick, uh, the PL15. Um, so that is where J10 was a was a solution that had been worked upon by the PF's pilots and the engineers in the past. So they they found it as a good alternate there. Mm, biggest challenge in designing an indigenous engine for the JF17, the metallurgy. Um, the um, the the um, the stuff <laughs> that is that is there uh, of uh, high end um, high performance engines uh, may it be turbojets and turbofans is challenging to manufacture. Um, so I leave it as that. Uh, which IAF aircraft, current or historic, would you like to fly? Mm. Well, I'm a Mirage guy, so I'll keep it on Mirage 2000. <laughs> so I'll keep it there. But good question. Uh, Arjun Saab, what, what kind of uh, future procurement is the PF looking forward to re replace its older platforms with the Mirages and F-16 MLUs? Well, they're already in the process. Um, so it will be a good combination of high and medium tech, which includes J-10, JF-17s and Block 52s. That is what the Air Force looks like in the near and the distant future as well. PF's current focus on numbers or quality. Always quality. Numbers have never been our ball game. Um, hypothetically, would you trade out the entire PF fleet for five F-35 squadron as 24 jets or squadron? Nah, I don't, I don't think that will work for us. Um, F-35 is, a, is an excellent aircraft in its own domain, but the problem is um, it, it has, it's too few a number. Um, there has to be some parity in quantifications uh, so that the stand can take place. Uh, so five only F-35s, uh, not possible. I don't think that it's, it's, a, it's a policy decision, but I, I would, if I was in the seat, no, I wouldn't go for that. Um, next up, Arav, good to have you here. Are there any plans of moving towards Turkish air and a, uh, sorry, Turkish air to air weaponry alongside American and Chinese? I think there's a lot of push, yes. Will it materialize in the future? That is another question. Um, but especially the um, unmanned domain is a lot more uh, pushing towards the Turkish aircraft or Turkish air to ground or air to air weapons, um, but not not on the manned weapon systems. Uh, Satyajit Saab, what can you tell us about the RAD ALCM that isn't classified? Nothing. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I can't tell you anything about the RAD project on, on air, so I'll keep it as it is. Uh, do the J-10s or PF have Thrust vectoring control. No, not there. Is the PF interested? Even the Chinese JF7, uh, sorry, J10s don't have it. There, there were, it was a demonstrator version of the J10 which had the TVCs. I think that that's about it. There's nothing more there. Is the PF interested in acquiring heavy fighters such as Chinese flankers? There has been talk off and on but more off than on about the flankers, but I don't think it's materializing anytime in the future. Um, F-86 Sabre or F-104, which one of the two would you choose to fly a pilot in 6571? F-86 any day of the week. 104 is fast, yes, but fast doesn't work if you're not able to employ uh, it in the true letter and spirit. Uh, so F-86 has, has outperformed uh, in many ways, um, the F-104 as well. Anyways, next, uh, are the PF procurement program efficient or painful? Hmm. Well, I, I, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mix of the two. Um, painful because it is tedious, painful because the um, requirements are thrashed, painful because the uh, financial aspect has to always be in, kept in check. Um, efficient depends on the timeline. It uh, depends on the circumstance and the scenario. Um, so, mix of both. Next up, what is your opinion on the Typhoon? If you had any choice, hey Brett, sorry, 
a new guy coming in. Brett, good to have you here. What is your opinion on the typhoon? And if you had a choice between Raphael and typhoon, which would you choose and why? Typhoon has its uh, has a long history, just like Raphael. Both of them have matured over a period of time, and they've done really well for themselves. Uh, but if I were to say they're not battle tested, not in the true letter and spirit, without an adversary. Um, so I like the shape of the typhoon. I like the sound of it as well. So that's about it. And there's no other reasoning behind it. Both are in the same class, um, omni role, multi role, whatever you want to call that. But I would like to go for the typhoon because I like the word. Uh, does the PF have interest in the uh, Beirut car Kirzilma stealth U cap? Yes. Let's leave it there. Uh, did the Kargil war have any impact on the absence of absence or attitude of PF instructors when you joined in 99? Mm, I couldn't get the question there. Did you get did the Kargil war have any impact on the absence or attitude? of PF instructors. I'm sorry, I couldn't get the question. Uh, maybe if you could rephrase that, I can I can get better at it. Uh, next up, what would you call as the golden era of the PF? Also, who is the PF hero whose stories you look, look up for inspiration? Alam, Rafiki, Yunus, Sisil Chaudhary, Middle Court. There are a lot of names. Uh, but we have all of them in the present times as well. Um, uh, just like the Nomans and the Hassan Siddiqui's that are there. Um, so inspiration is galore. Um, but yes, it's, it's always there. Golden era. Um, it's, it's ongoing. I think, I think that would be the correct way of putting this. It's an ongoing process. There's no one specific era that is there. Uh, which RAF aircraft would you like to fly if uh, could have had an exchange in your time? I would have loved to be a part of the Red Arrows. I, I love how disciplined uh, they are in their operations. I've seen them operate on a global scale. I was at the riot um, or the REACT 2023 um, at Fairford. Gorgeous. So I would love to be there. Um, okay, Saad, uh, what is your opinion on whether Pakistan should try to get trash one typhoons? Spain phasing out, da, 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 da. I, as I mentioned, buying an aircraft, keeping an aircraft is similar than like buying a Rolls Royce and keeping a Rolls Royce. So I leave it at that. Did the PF ever think of acquiring the F-15 Eagle or the F-14 Tomcat based on the F-16 performance? Too expensive uh, beyond the beyond the beyond the budget of the Air Force. Let's keep it there. Um, your pilot does the PF allow its senior fighter pilots to? Uh, I couldn't get the government to keep it flying instructor if they wish. So yes, some people or some senior uh, pilots who retire at a uh, relatively senior age, they do come back and train the next generation of uh, pilots as well. It's a, it's a process. Yes, that is happening as we speak. Harry, good to have you here. Did you fly the Shenyang F6, FT6? No, nope, I did not. I'm sorry. What is your opinion on the aircraft? For the role of close air support, uh, because we saw the A5s operate, so A5 is a variant of the F6, or so it's good at what it does. Um, some rumors are they're not been completely phased out and they're placed in cold storage in one of the bases, but I think they're they're, they're long gone now. Um, yeah. Um, out of uh, clear skies, great weather on a beautiful Sunday morning. Which would you, which one will you take for a joyride, PG or the six? Uh, not including Mirage. <laughs> yeah. So um, me, because of my torso height, I've not been able to fit into the Chinese weapon systems. So, but if I given the option, PG any day of the week, it's it's ideal. But the people who have flown the F-6, uh, they've really, they, they have a very high regard for that weapon system. They say it's, it, it was one of the, um, one of the most interesting aircraft to fly. Um, yeah, so that's there. Uh, Saeed, uh, Saeed Al-Mamun, good to have you here. What was the reconnaissance equipment on the Mirage 
5 and how the images were processed. So it wasn't Mirage 5, it was the Mirage 3 RPs that were there, Reconnaissance Pakistan, and they were having uh, Omera 33s. Uh, this is a camera type. Then they had the IRLS, which is the infrared line scan. Um, the um, they had F100, 200, 600 cameras in the nose as well, and the infamous LORAP, which is the long range aerial photography or the LORAP oblique photography pods. So the processing was manual. It was just like a old school um, reel that was taken out of a camera and then processed in dark red light and then exposed gradually to after mixing and matching the different mosaics that were there. Okay, Satyajit, uh, good to have you back. How would you describe the atmosphere of the PF Academy during Kargil War in 99? I, I would say it was uh, not the highest points of the Pakistan Air Force. I'll, I'll leave it there. Uh, but obviously, we, we, we have to up the ante and bring things back into perspective for the subsequent generations. Um, so yeah, uh, next up, any opinion on base pro protection after the recent attack on Miawali? This is a security uh, issue. I, I wouldn't say, I, I don't have any opinions on it. I, I cannot have an opinion because I'm not from the security paraphernalia of the Air Force. I'm from the fighter side, so I'll leave it there. Safest jet in the PEF? At present, the J-10, the J-10C, uh, CE. Uh, have you ever had ex exercise with the uh, VKS? Hmm. The Russians, if so, what are your impressions? No, we've not had any experiences or uh, exercises with the Russians. So I can't give you, give any any information on that. Any plans to rig PL-15 on the on the on the F-16s, I guess, yeah, on the F-16s, given the IF's acquisition of the Meteor, I don't think so. I don't think it's on the on the radar. Uh, it's it's two different weapon systems. One's a Chinese platform, the other's an American one. To integrate both of them to the radars which are involved, it gets too complicated. So no, it's it's nothing like that. But and obviously there are the strings attached to it as well. So it's not going to happen in the future, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so I believe that brings us to the end of our uh, QA. But thank you, uh, Sadia Ji, Lal Saab, Arjun Saab. You've been you've been very heartening in asking questions. I believe I've given you decent answers. Harry, good to have you here. Neuropilot, you've come back again. Thanks again, Saad, uh, as well. Um, so. Takeaway point, I would say at present, um, the military aviation is moving slowly but surely from manned to unmanned systems. Uh, may it be the UCAF platforms, the Loyal Wingman platforms, um, and things will continue to move in that direction as well as artificial intelligence grows, machine learning improves, algorithms, computing technologies, radars which become more ESA radars, more active, um, integration of sensors and data acquisition platforms. So things are growing to go more towards this. And this is the future, if I'm not wrong, um, of, of military aviation as well, just like any other aviation across the globe. Mike, do we have you here? Yes, I have you here. Yes, so have. yes, absolutely amazing Q and A. So thank you very much, Fahad, for uh, coming on this for uh, this great Q and A, uh, and thank you very much for everyone who put the questions in there. And Fahad, thank you very much. And where can we find you online before we let you go? Yes, so LinkedIn, because uh, that's the most professional website uh, that I could find to network with like-minded individuals and professionals, uh, thought leaders of tomorrow as well. So LinkedIn is something where you can find me. Just write in Fahad Ibn Masood and you will find me there as well. Brilliant stuff. And I'll link everything in the description below. But uh, Fahad, what an amazing Q&A. So thank you very much for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure. Pleasure being here. You take care. Have a 
chilly winter your side of the world and it's pretty late my side past midnight so i'm going to hit the bed absolutely cheers cheers be safe bye